If you've ever managed IIS web servers before and something goes wrong with your web applications, it can be really difficult to pinpoint the exact source of the problem or sometimes to even recreate the problem. Now this is exactly what failed request tracing is designed to address and it's definitely one of the coolest things to happen to IIS 7. Failed request tracing allows IIS to maintain information about an entire request so that if the request fails somewhere along the line, IIS will maintain comprehensive information about what happened and we can use that information to troubleshoot the problem. In fact, this is not only useful for troubleshooting live applications, but it's also useful from a developer's point of view as well, as it will definitely help troubleshoot application problems whilst you're creating the application. Now, when we installed our IIS role on this server, we also installed the tracing role service. But if you don't have it installed and you've already installed IIS, into our server manager we'll go and we'll click on roles. And then over on the right, we'll scroll down to our web server role and then go and take a look at our role services. And what we're looking for here is tracing. And if that's not installed on your server, you'll need to scroll up a little bit and then choose add role services and then add that service in. So I'll assume that you've done that for now and we'll move on and we'll switch over to our IIS 7 console. So the first thing we'll need to do is to enable failed request tracing and this is a site level feature so when we enable it we'll need to be doing it at the site level. So let's select our default website and over here on the right hand side in our actions pane, down the bottom we'll choose failed request tracing. So at the top here we'll need to check the enable box to enable failed request tracing and we could also change the path to where the traces will be logged to and by default you'll see that it will log up to 50 traces before it starts overriding the older entry. So you can change these things if you feel you need to. So we'll click on OK and failed request tracing is now enabled but for this default website only. So if you want to capture these traces for other sites then you'll need to do exactly what we've just done here and then enable it in the actions pane for each site. Alright well that's the first step we've enabled failed request tracing for our default website. So the next step is to tell IIS 7 what constitutes a failure. And what I mean by that is we'll need to tell IIS under what conditions do we want to log these failures. Is a failure when a user gets a 403 message? Is it when our site's running slow? Is it when IIS isn't delivering pages from cache? So into the middle of the console we'll go and we'll double click here on failed request tracing rules. And here we'll need to define what conditions we want to log. So over here on the right in the actions pane we'll click add and this is going to open up a new wizard where firstly it's asking for what type of content we wish to trace. Is it all content, ASP.NET, ASP or custom? Now obviously what you select here will be dependent on what type of content you're using in your website and if you're using static pages like I am here on my site at the moment you could choose custom and then just enter in asterisk.htm for example and that way you're narrowing down the amount of data that IIS has to monitor and log but I'm just going to set mine to all content at the top here and we'll click next and then here we'll need to define under what conditions we we'll want to implement our trace. So is it going to be when a specific status code is encountered such as when we have a 403 or a 404 error and do take note though that we are able to break down status codes in IIS 7 to their subcodes as well. So whilst we could simply look for a blanket 404 error or page not found code we could be more specific and look for a 404.1 error indicating that our website isn't accessible on a requested port. Now if you do want to use this option and you want to enter in more than one error code simply separate each of them with a comma or if you want to trace a range of codes then separate them with a hyphen. Now next we could trace a request if it's taking longer than a certain number of seconds or based on a specific severity. So let's go with a status code here. We'll go with a 404 error for this example and in fact I've just rethought it. Why don't we go one step further and we're going to retrace a 404.2 status code and we'll click next 
Now next here we can choose which trace provider to use. So if you're not using ASP or ASP.NET, you can uncheck these. And you'll note that if we do select our www server, in this areas section that opens up here to the right, you've got a bunch of different areas that we can look at. So you might be starting to get the picture here that there's many, many different conditions that we're able to monitor. So for now, look, let's just click finish and there's our rule. Now we can of course add in new rules if you like, but you get the idea. Let's just move on and test our work. So what we'll do is we'll click on start, we'll go to computer, our C drive. I'm going to go to my default website, which is in INET pub, WW root. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take a copy of my IIS start page here and we'll rename it to something else. Let's just rename it test and I'm going to give it the extension of ASP. Now we'll go back to our IIS 7 console and we're going to right click on our server here SO5. I'm sorry, we'll click on our server SO5 and then we'll scroll down in the middle of the window here to where the security heading is and we'll locate ISAPI and CGI restrictions and for the purposes of this exercise we're going to turn ASP off so we'll double click on that you can see here that ASP or Active Server Pages is in fact allowed so I'm going to select that and then choose deny and now we'll go and open up Internet Explorer and if we navigate to our server here SO5 we'll hit enter and you can see our default documents being returned to us and there it is but what happens if we go and look for our test dot ASP page. Well here you can see we get a 404.2 error and the good news is that you can see IIS does return a pretty detailed page here with a lot of potentially good solutions to our problem and sure while some of these solutions may very well be the real solution to our problem at this time we're only interested in what our logs can tell us. So let's go and take a look and see what if anything IIS 7 can tell us about this 404.2 error. So to find our trace, we'll need to click on Start and open up Computer. We'll go to our C drive, INET Pub, Logs, Failed Request Log Files, and then our log folder here, W3SVC1. And in here, you'll expect to find two files, an XML file, which is our trace of our error, and an XSL style sheet to make all the output nice and pretty. Now you'll firstly realize pretty quickly that when we double click on our XML file, it's going to throw up an error like this telling us that it can't use the XSL style sheet. So we need to fix this problem and to do that in Internet Explorer, we'll come up here to our tools menu, we'll choose Internet Options, then we'll choose the Security tab and then Trusted Sites and finally we'll click on the Sites button. Now in this Add field here, We'll need to type in about internet and we'll click add and then close and then OK. Now if we hit F5 to refresh this page, the page loads fine. So on this page, and you'll note that it can be pretty big, but hey, that's the point, isn't it? Giving us back a wealth of information about what exactly was going on with this request so we can troubleshoot the problem. Now the nice part about this file is that with this default view, it only shows you those parts of the trace that contained errors. So right here is likely to be the problem. However, if you do want the full version showing everything that's been going on, then at the top here we can click on Request Details. And if we expand out this whole screen by clicking this Expand All link, it's going to bring back a really long detailed account of all of the history of that request. Now going back up to the top here, the other option we have is the compact view which pretty much shows the same sort of information but it's a little easier to digest and again as with the other two views if we scroll down we should see, there we go, there's a warning sections here highlighted where our error really is and they're highlighted with this big yellow X so they're pretty easy to find. So there you have failed request tracing which can help you track down the cause of errors in your web applications. It's also really useful, especially when you have those annoying random problems. 
And I'll call them random since I'm referring to problems that you just can't recreate. They always seem to happen when you're not around and all you ever get to see is that something happened. And the solution is to just reboot the server and hope that the problem goes away. Well, with failed request tracing, at least you can have these rules that you can configure to actively monitor your server and if the problem reoccurs, then you're going to have a wealth of information about what your server was doing at that time, leaving you with the information you need to solve the problem and then move on with other things. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and would like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.